I'm going to explain the rules of Garden Nation, a game for 2 to 4 players by Nathalie and Rémi Saunier, with artwork by Maxime Morin and published by Bombix. Play as one of four clans of little people exiled from the forest who have joined together to build a city in an abandoned garden. Very soon, each clan will do anything to secretly achieve their own objectives. Put the four corners together and then randomly place the seven territory tiles within them to create the main playing board. Choose the side of the turn track according to the number of players and place it in space on the board. Place the objective board next to the main board, shuffle the associated cards, make a deck that is placed on top and reveal the first four cards that will be the common project. Put the bramble tokens, the roofs and the torte crane within reach to form the reserve. Each player chooses their board and takes their colored tokens and floors according to the number of players. That is 20 floors for 2 players, 17 for 3 and 14 for 4. They then place their score token on the zero of the track. The first player is chosen at random and places their population token on number 38 of their player board. The other players place theirs on number 35. The first player then places their player token hedgehog on the first space of the turn track, while the others place theirs next to the track. Finally, the secret mission cards are shuffled, four are dealt face down to each player, who then chooses two different missions from those and discards the other two. The Tardy Crane is used to show the territory where the action must take place. It is then moved according to the area where the player just played. If a player carries out their action in the center area of any territory, the next action must take place in the central territory. If an action is carried out in the bottom left area of any territory, the next action must take place in one of the areas in the bottom left territory and so on. So it is possible for two consecutive actions to take place in the same territory. The first action of the game is played in the territory of the first player's choice. A round of the game consists of three phases, player actions, territory control, and then preparation for the next round. During your turn, carry out the number of actions you're allowed to according to your position on the turn track. The first player can carry out one action, while the other players carry out two actions each. There are two types of actions, construction and abandoning a building. To construct a building, choose an empty area in the territory where the Tardy Crane is located and move your token back on your population track as many spaces as the value of the land. Finally, place a floor of your own color on that area, which is now a building. If you decide to construct a bramble area, choose which type of vegetation will grow on that area for the rest of the game by selecting a token from the reserve and placing it on the bramble area. Then move your population token back 5 spaces and place a floor on the chosen area. If you want to add a floor to one of your buildings, pay the land value plus 1 for each floor already constructed there. You can also choose to abandon one of your buildings in the territory where the Tardy Crane is located. To do this, take back the floors that make up the building, return the roof to the reserve if necessary, and move your population token forward as many spaces as the number of inhabitants needed to construct it multiplied by 2. Once you have carried out your action, if you have just placed a floor necessary to complete a common project, you may claim it. Immediately score the victory points for the project by moving your token forward on the score track, place the card in front of you, then reveal a new one. Put a roof on the last building you use to complete the project. This building can no longer be used for common project or secret missions, except for territory control missions, and you can no longer add any floors to it. There are several types of common projects that can be carried out depending on the height and the number of buildings constructed on specific areas. Please note that to validate a project, all the buildings you use must be constructed on the requested type of land. Those areas can be on two adjacent territories. When an objective requires a certain number of floors be constructed, that is always the minimum number you need. You also have four ploy tokens at your disposal. You can use one of these per action to carry out additional maneuvers. Strategic movement is used before you take your action. 
it allows you to avoid playing on the required territory by moving the Tardy Crane in the territory numerically higher or lower. Display is not an action. The roof transfer is also used before you take your action. It allows you, when playing in a territory where one of your buildings is blocked by a roof, to move that roof to another one of your buildings in the same type of land. Display is again not an action. Finally, invading a building allows you to take over another player's building in the territory where you are playing by replacing their floors with yours. You must reduce your population by the number of inhabitants needed for the building multiplied by two. The opposing player gets their floors back and gains the number of inhabitants you just lost. If necessary, the roof is returned to the reserve. This replaces your action. For each of the ploys you use during the game, place a token on the corresponding track. Once all four tokens have been used, you will not be able to make any additional ploys. Finally, end your turn by choosing who the next player will be and placing their hedgehog after yours on the track. With two players, you alternate turns. If you are the first player and you just carried out your action, you place the second player's hedgehog on the space 2 of the turn track and yours on the space 3. At the end of their turn, the second player places their hedgehog on the space 4. When the last player has completed their second action, move on to territory control. On tile 1, count the number of floors of each color. The player with the most floors there gains two inhabitants and advances their token on the population track. If there is a tie, each one gains one inhabitant. Do the same for each territory in ascending order. During the course of the game, it is possible to have more than 40 inhabitants on your track. So take a plus 40 counter to represent the additional inhabitants and adjust the number on your track by starting from one again. However, you cannot have less than one inhabitant. If you get that low, you will have to increase your population before you can carry out certain actions again. Then set up the next round. The last player becomes the first player and their opponent's pieces are moved to the side of the turn track. When a player places the last floor from their reserve, the game ends, regardless of whether they then abandon a building as their second action or not. The current round is finished as normal, the territory control step is completed and the players calculate their final score. Move your score marker forward as many spaces as the points you earn for your population and your secret missions. The same building can count towards several secret missions, but buildings that have a roof are ignored when counting except for territory control missions. There are two main types of secret mission those that are based on the number of floors in your building and those that give you points if you have a majority in the given territory. The player with the most victory points wins the game. Have a good game!